Hey everyone, today we're gonna to learn how to use JavaScript, and I'm talking about just the basics of JavaScript inside of Articulate Storyline 360. So let's go ahead and get started. My name is Jeff Batt, and if you haven't checked out my website already, go ahead and check out my website at learningdojo.ninja. Here you can check out all of my previous trainings, my blog posts, and also full trainings covering everything from A to Z, as well as download templates. All right, so I have posted a lot of different JavaScript and Storyline tutorials out there, and you can check those out uh, right here if you wanted to check out all of my JavaScript and Storyline, but I realized that I've never actually posted getting started with JavaScript inside of Storyline or just JavaScript, uh, the basics of JavaScript and how you work with JavaScript inside of Storyline. So that is the point of today's video. So let's go ahead and dive right into Storyline and talk about just how to start getting used to working with JavaScript and especially pulling out information from JavaScript or from Storyline to JavaScript and push information back from JavaScript to Storyline. So let's go ahead and dive in here. And I just have a simple example here. So really what I wanna do is I have a variable here called variable test, and I wanna get that information from JavaScript, and then I wanna set it, I have it misspelled here, but I wanna set it back to something else. And something to keep in mind with JavaScript, especially Storyline and JavaScript, is when you're working with JavaScript, it's almost like in a, its own little world. So you have to pull information out of Storyline in order to then work with it and manipulate it, and then you have to push information back. So really there's this getting where I have to get the information from Storyline, like a variable or whatever the information is. And then there's the setting part where I then set it back to Storyline. And then all of the other logic is usually inside of Storyline. You can decide what page to go down depending on what time of day it is, or you can change states depending on what time of or what month it is. All of that you can check out uh, on my playlist. I cover how to do all of that. But this is the core of being able to trigger the JavaScript to get a variable out of the Storyline course and then to do something with it and then push it back to Storyline. So let's go ahead and get that information from a variable. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on add a new trigger. And in order to run any type of JavaScript, no matter what it is, I have to execute the JavaScript by selecting this actions box here. And then coming down, let's go ahead and scroll down here, going down to execute JavaScript. Now JavaScript, if you're really new and you haven't used any type of JavaScript, websites are essentially made up of three different things. They're made up of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And I really think of it as like objects that we can work with. That's the HTML. That's also the structure. Styling is the CSS. And so it's pretty much how we stylize and change the layouts and colors and everything like that. And then JavaScript is the behavior. So really you only need to do JavaScript when you have, you want to do some type of behavior, something where you want to pull some information out and then and push it back, that's really the behavior. And so you don't really need to do JavaScript if you're just worried about layouts or if you're worried about style or something like that. It's when you wanna do additional behavior when you probably need to do some JavaScript. And really, with Storyline, you don't need to do JavaScript. It's only if you wanted to customize and go beyond what's the default functionality inside a Storyline. All right, so we have this, and we're gonna keep this when the user clicks, but keep in mind that the event is important because this is when the JavaScript will fire. So right now, we have it so when the user clicks here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up. Now, this is my JavaScript editor. I can go ahead and place whatever JavaScript I want here. And a simple JavaScript that I can go ahead and just test here is an alert function. A function is a block of code. It has some information or some, some code that you want to run, some logic that you want to figure out. That's really what a function is. Now, when we pass in information in our parentheses here, that means we are giving this block of code some information to work with and it's gonna give us some information back. So I'm gonna pass in an alert and say, <clears throat> the typical one when you're first learning how to code is hello world. That's our first JavaScript here. So if I go ahead and click OK, and then I click OK here, I can't really preview JavaScript inside of Storyline. And the reason why is because Storyline is not a browser. So when we preview it inside of Storyline, it's, I mean, they may have like a browser functionality to a point, but it doesn't handle external JavaScript. So what I need to do, and the first time I do this takes a little bit of time, but after that, I don't really think it takes a whole lot of time. But what I do 
do is I publish to the web. I'm gonna publish this to my desktop here and just hit publish. Now again, the first time it'll take a little bit more time, but every other time it goes pretty fast. So we'll just wait a second. All right, so now I can go ahead and view my project, which will pull up my browser, whatever default browser that you're using. In my case, I'm using Chrome here, and it's gonna pull up my Storyline course. Now, if I click on this button, that's when the JavaScript will fire. So I'm gonna click on that, and you'll notice a little alert pops up, and this is a JavaScript function. We can alert things or prompt things to the user, and then we can do other things. We can add logic and whatever we wanted to do here. So that's how you run JavaScript. Now, if you wanna learn more about JavaScript, you can check out w3schools.com, and if you go into the JavaScript section, they have so much information about JavaScript. I'm also thinking about creating a course specifically with JavaScript basics and how you apply the JavaScript to Storyline 360 or Captivate or Lectora. If you're interested in that type of course, leave a comment down below, go to my YouTube channel, leave a comment down below and say, hey Jeff, I'm interested in that course. I just wanna gauge to see how popular that course it would be basically. So go ahead and check that out and I can provide everything, JavaScript basics, talk about variables and functions and other things like that. But you can also get that information here, but I would put it within the context of learning and storyline and other tools. So again, go ahead and comment at my YouTube channel if you're interested in that. All right, so let's go ahead and go back here and let's go in and talk about getting and setting variables inside a storyline because we can run JavaScript here, but it really doesn't communicate back to the course unless we tell it specifically to communicate back to the course or we can't even get information from the course in this JavaScript unless we do it in a certain way. So let's first of all talk about how to get information from the course into our little JavaScript window. Again, this is kind of like a separate, I think of it like a separate world that we have to get the information from Storyline, work with it, and then push it back to Storyline. So let's go ahead and get rid of our alerts here. And in order to talk to the player, the Storyline player, we need to create a variable that will talk to that player. So then we can just reference that player in the future. And we create variables inside a Storyline. So we're really working with the same thing, but you just have to type it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and say player equals, and then we're gonna say get, now capital capitalization does matter. So get player, open, close parentheses, and then end that with a semicolon. The reason why I'm doing this is because then from now on, whenever I wanna talk to the player, and I'm talking about the storyline player, instead of writing out get player, open, close parentheses, all I have to do is type in player. And then now it's the, the code knows that I'm talking to the player. So it's just a shortcut way. You could type out get player, open, close parentheses, but it's up to you there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to alert. We already learned about alert. We can pass in different information in the parentheses here. So what we're gonna do is get the variable and we're gonna get the variable called variable test. You could go into your variables over on the right hand side and you can get the right variable name. This has to match exactly basically. So I'm gonna go in here and say, hey player dot get var, which stands for get variable, open close parentheses and then inside of quotes, we need to type in the variable exactly. So I named it variable test. You can name it whatever you want. Variables are pretty flexible. The only time that you, or the only rule you should follow is pretty much they can't be two words. That's why the, in this case, the second word is a capital T, variable test. That's what's called camel case. They can't be two words and they also can't be names of common words inside of JavaScript. And that could be something like uh, get time or functions like that. So you have to be careful of that. But for the most part, you can name it whatever you want. So what it's going to do is just get that information and tell me what, it's just gonna tell me what the variable is. It's going to alert that to me. So let's go ahead and just preview this out again. And like I mentioned before, this is not gonna take as much time as it did before because all the files are already there. It's just kind of updating changes. So it really doesn't take much more time than previewing the file itself. And so I'm gonna click on view project. And then what we're gonna do, we already know it's gonna be 15, but I wanna make sure that I can get it inside of JavaScript. So I'm gonna click on get variable. I might've typed something. Let's go back to my code. I wasn't getting the alert. Oh, I did forget one thing. It's um, so get variable has to be open, close parentheses and quote, but I forgot to actually end it with this parentheses here. 
So I need to have double parentheses at the end, really because the alert needs to have its own parentheses and then this git var needs to have its own parentheses as well. Sometimes you might miss something like that. So just look over your code, make sure you got all that part here. I mean, that's where like that basic JavaScript course could come into play. So I'm gonna click okay. Let's publish this out again. Let's click on view project. And then I'm gonna click on get variable and there we go. So now we have gotten that information out. In order to work with this information, we would probably have to come in and let's go back into our code here. What I would have to do is anytime I wanna get that information out, I would have to write that entire line of code. JavaScript is sometimes, I like to think of developers as lazy because they like to simplify things as much as possible so they don't have to write out the entire line of code here. So in order to like simplify this a little bit more, what we could do is actually store that reference in another variable. So I could go ahead and say let, and then we're gonna say variable info and then equals, and then I could just paste in that reference to that variable from Storyline. And then now, anytime I wanna use that variable, all I have to do is say variable info, and then I could just do that instead of typing out that big long um, get var variable test and everything, I just can reference it that way. Now I can even shorten the variable name and make it even shorter if I wanted to. But what we wanna do here, now that that's stored in a variable, is we wanna manipulate the variable. We wanna go ahead and add something to it. Now, and then we want to push that information back. Remember I, I said this before, whenever you're working with JavaScript and you wanna get information from Storyline, you have to do that get, get the variable, work with it and then push it back to storyline. So that's an important part here is we need to, we got the information, let's make some adjustments and then let's push it back to storyline here. So let's go ahead and do some math because this is a number so I can go ahead and do some math. So I'm gonna say let's updated, well we could just do like variable info, variable info plus 15 but I wanna store this inside of a variable, so I probably have to, before I do the math, let me come back here. Before I do the math, let's actually store this inside of an updated number. So I'm gonna say updated num equal, and then we're gonna add whatever the current value, which we know it's 15, and then we're gonna add 15 to that. So by the end of this, this updated number should actually be 30. So I'm gonna go ahead and just end that with a semicolon. And a semicolon in JavaScript is almost like a period, because JavaScript really is a list of commands. We're telling the computer, we're telling the experience what to do. And so here's command number one, here's command number two, here's command number three. We can have as many commands as we want, but in each command, we need to end it with a period, or that's typical language, you end it with a period, but in this case, we're ending it with a semicolon. Now, it will still work if you forget the semicolon, but it's better syntax and it lets other developers know kind of where the end of that command is. So I highly recommend doing that. All right, so we have our updated number. I could alert this. Let me just do this for now. I could say updated num. Let me go ahead and hit okay. And I'm gonna publish this out. Now we're gonna see that the number is updated, but it's not pushed back to storyline quite yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit publish here. I wanna emphasize that that's the important part is pushing it back to storyline. Storyline needs to know about it. Otherwise we've just kind of worked with it in our own world, which sometimes it works. Sometimes that's all we need to do. Be if we're detecting the time of day or something or doing some math logic, that's fine but Storyline won't know about it until we push it back to Storyline. So let's go ahead and click on this project. Now keep in mind that this variable is being displayed right here. But when I click on get variable, notice how it's saying 30. But if I click okay, that variable didn't change inside of the course. So that's the final step. Once you've done your calculations, you've done your manipulations with the information, push it back. Now, at times you don't actually need to get information from Storyline, you can just go figure out the time of day or figure out the month or something like that and then push it to Storyline. But if you are getting it and you're manipulating it, 
the final thing is to push it back to storyline. So let's go ahead and go into storyline here. And what we're going to do with this is similar to what we did with the get var. I'm gonna stop alerting that, so I'll get rid of that code. I just like to use alert to test to make sure I'm, you know, step by step kind of getting the right process, getting the right information. Let's go ahead and push this back. So what I'm gonna do is say player, and instead of get var, we're actually going to set var, but we're going to set the variable. Now in parentheses, we have to provide two pieces of information. And usually when you provide two pieces of information, you separate out those two pieces of information by a comma. The first piece of information, so in front of that comma, we need to go ahead and tell Storyline what variable we're talking to or what variable we're going to update, which in this case is going to be variable test. We're gonna push that information back to variable test. Now I could create another variable to have the new information if I wanted to, but I wanna push it back to its original information here. So variable test, and it has to be uh, capitalized exactly the same. And then the next thing after the comma is the second piece of information, which is the updated value. What has changed about this? What does the new, what does that variable need to have or what is the value that it needs to be updated with? Which in this case, we already have stored right here. So what we could do is just type in updated num. So by doing that, we've provided the new value. Now I don't have to do that calculation somewhere else. I could actually do that calculation right after the comma, and then I could just have that as part of what gets pushed back. But it's a way to kind of separate out the code so I can do the calculation somewhere else and then push it to Storyline at that point. So that's the final thing we need to do. I'm gonna go ahead and preview this again. So I'll just hit publish and then hit publish here. And hopefully you can tell that it doesn't take as long to preview the next time. Yes, it takes a couple seconds longer, but it's still doable in my opinion. And then if I click on view project, you can see right here, there is my get variable information, but instead of alerting, it's going to go ahead and update this variable as soon as I click on it. So I'm gonna click on it and you'll notice that the information has now been pushed back. So that is the beauty of JavaScript, the ability to pull out information from Storyline, manipulate it in any way that we want. So we can go beyond the functionality of Storyline. We can detect the user's operating system. We can add code to um, Greensock or like some custom animations. We can add parallax effects. We can add tilts and, and grow. There's so many different JavaScript libraries that are out there that we can add on to Storyline. And then this is how we push information back to Storyline and how Storyline knows about it. So this is why I really wanted to cover just JavaScript in the basics of JavaScript inside a Storyline and how you work with JavaScript and then push that information back to Storyline. If you want to learn more about JavaScript, again, check out the W3 Schools, or if you're interested in my course, again, uh, leave a comment down below and saying, hey, I'm interested in your course. That will let me know that that's requested and then I can start working on that. But you can see here, there are, there are so many things that I can do. I can do query strings, I can do arrays, I can do uh, more complex math than what you can do in the triggers. And you can also check out my playlist of all the different storyline and JavaScripts that I've done. And hopefully it makes, when you go back to those, hopefully it makes a little bit more sense if you're just starting out with JavaScript. You can also check out my previous blog post on my website. You can download templates and you can get full courses, everything from A to Z on the various different learning development tools. Also, if you like this video, head on over to my YouTube channel, click that like button, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell notification so you get notified of all future videos as they come out. That helps me, allows my channel to continue to grow, allows me to continue to produce these videos for you, and hopefully help you out with your learning developments and your e-learning developments that you're working on, and just to make your life a little bit easier or, or push the limits a little bit more. That's really my goal of this channel. And if you have any other videos that you want me to produce, go ahead and leave a comment there. Uh, and that's all that I have. So thanks everyone, and I'll see you next time.